Hello, everyone. In this section, we are going to talk about one of the three pillars of trauma-wise care, and the three pillars come from Howard Bath. We're going to talk about felt safety. And before we even get into this, I really want to acknowledge that you guys may not be in a safe place, that the people that you're bringing into your countries definitely have not been in a safe place, and you're in a place with so many unknowns that that alone can bring a lack of felt safety. We don't know which way this war is heading. Felt safety is going to be really, really hard right now. So we're gonna to have to do our best to be in circumstances where we don't have control, that we bring as much of that felt safety into um, the situation as we can. So I want you to think about what is the difference in being safe and feeling safe? So for the kids and families that have come into your country, they were not safe. They literally just fled war. We all know this, they were not safe at all. Um, if you're in a bordering country, maybe you don't feel safe. That is, we, that basic safety did not exist for them. When they get to your country and we think they have some safety, it's quite different to feel safe than it is to just be safe. Remember in the first segment when we talked about the brain and we talked about flipping the lid and the upstairs and downstairs brain. In order to get to our upstairs brain, we have to feel safe. That means that I don't just know that I'm safe, that I know that my caregiver is a safe person for me to be with. I know that my environment is safe for me to be in. I don't have to rely on my downstairs brain to do all of the hard work of keeping me safe because there are other people that are assisting in that too. So when we think about felt safety, we do wanna be really aware that most people are not in a physically safe space right now. So we're gonna to have to just do the best we can um, with the tools that you can bring to the table for yourself, for the other adults around and for the youth and kids you're serving. One of the ways that we build felt safety is by following a schedule. We make it clear, we post it up so that the kids know when breakfast is, what's happening after breakfast, when lunch is, what's happening after lunch. Is there a nap time? Is there a specific recreation time? And I know with so much chaos, it's hard to put that into place, but as many things as you can put into um, a schedule throughout the day and then make that clear to the kids, they don't have to wonder about it. So if I have, if you have a poster on the wall that says, you know, breakfast at uh, 8 a.m. And, and lunch at noon and dinner at 6 p.m. and there's going to be a snack at 3 and at 10 a.m., then the, the kids' brains don't have to worry about when they're going to eat. They can simply look and know. And when you follow that schedule, their brains will calm down some. So creating a schedule and sticking to it as much as you can understanding things are changing all the time for you as much as you can stick to a schedule that will help to calm the stress system in the kids and keep them in their upstairs brain the second part of that is that are we being predictable as much as possible as the caregivers so do i follow the schedule when a child comes and asks me something are they going to get a similar response can they trust that I am going to meet their needs when they express them? And maybe even try to meet them when they don't, okay? So we want a good schedule that the day itself is predictable and the environment is predictable. And then we want the adults and the caregivers to be predictable, okay? Again, this can be hard right now and you just do the best you can. Built into our schedule, we do things like routines. And so that might mean that every time you come for a meal, you, um, if you're in a family environment, maybe you stand up behind your chair, maybe you go ahead and sit down, but that would be part of your, your routine of coming to the table. If you have more of a group setting, maybe it's that everybody lines up for the meal um, and, and then they get served their meal and they go sit down at a table. And that is the routine. It might be that when you wake up, you uh, do these certain things, you change your clothes or whatever you're doing 
before you get to breakfast and that's your morning routine. It might be in the evening, but if you are, if you have little kids that you have um, a story time every single evening. Um, and so they know that as you're progressing towards story time, that you're progressing towards bed. For our big kids, it might be that we just circle up and have a check-in at the end of the day. And they know that is a dedicated time where everybody's going to slow down. Maybe part of our predictability is that we're going to talk about the next day as much as we know. Um, and so we're building in routines and structures around things that we do throughout the day so that the kids know what to expect. Another part of creating felt safety or rituals. And rituals are places where we build connection into the routine. So if the kids are lining up to go outside to play, then we might have a, a caregiver at the door giving them a high five or a fist bump saying, have so much fun, I'm so glad you're here. And then having another caregiver when they're coming back in doing the same thing. I'm so glad I get to spend the afternoon with you. High five, fist bump, learning the kids' names really well, interacting with them to create connection. And that becomes a ritual and it calms the stress system down. Okay, so that those things are going to help them stay in their upstairs brain as much as possible. Another way for felt safety is to have a really predictable time where they're going to have plenty of food, plenty of snacks, and plenty of water. Okay, they need all of those things right now as a way to, again, keep them in their upstairs brain. They don't have to stress about when food is coming and it's going to be available to them. So part of your schedule should really include at least three meals and a couple of snacks a day, if that's possible. Do the best you can with what you have. We know that times might be tight, but if you can make it happen, I would try to do as, as much meal and snack time as you possibly can, okay? Those are just a few small tips and tricks for felt safety and how you can um, get them, and get it into your environment in a way that's really low bar. So don't stress out about, out about it. If you can't do it perfectly, that's okay. We just want you to have a few things you can try, okay?